Eto na. Um, hindi ako nakatulog dito kasi she was the last person na kausap ko kagabi. Um, not to say it's it, we hardly talk, you know, but we always keep in touch. Uh, I follow her. I follow her stories. I follow her advocacies. I basically, uh, anong tawag doon? Stalk her, you know? Um, I've seen not only um, the passion, I've seen true friendship with this girl. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about Miss Cherry Ateliano. Cherry Ateliano is agricult is an agricultural scientist and an environmental advocate. She graduated from the Visayas State University with a bachelor's degree in agriculture, major in horticulture, specialized in tissue culture, as magna cum laude. She is the founder and CEO of Agrea Agricultural Systems International Incorporated, a for-purpose and inclusive business that is creating the first replicable one island economy that is zero hunger, zero waste, and zero insufficiency. Cherry started teaching farmers at the age of 12. She uh, has 22 years of vast experience um, in sustainable food system. She's a partner of a Singapore-based impact investment company called Deal Impact Fund that invests in impact agribusiness in Southeast Asia. She is globally multi-awarded. Global Young Laureate Award, the Outstanding Student of the Philippines, the Outstanding Young Women of Nation Service, the Outstanding Young Men, uh, and Inspiring Filipina Entrepreneur. She is a high-level ambassador of UN Scaling, uh, up, Scaling Up Nutrition, Food System, Champion of the United Nations, Young Global Leader of World Economic Forum and Asia Society Young Leader. She also serves on the board of several commercial and nonprofit organizations locally and globally, such as Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition or GAIN, World Bank Solutions for Youth Network, United People Global, UPG, with Graca Michelle, wife of the late President Nelson Mandela, among others, and in the Philippines, Ambassador for Food Security. In 2020, her leadership in COVID-19 response for connecting farmers to consumers, she's named, she's named, hold on, hold on, ayan, she's, nawala ako doon, sorry. Grabe Michael, ang haba, oh. ang daming accolades oh, ng ating guest oh, nga. today. Yes. She is named the best top manager in post-pandemic economy of APEC Best Award and UN Women WEP's Award for COVID-19 Response. Cherry is also one of the inaugural honorees of the 50 Next Leaders by 50 Best and Best Culinary Center, a list of exceptional young people from all over the world who are shaping the future of gastronomy. In 2021, she just finished her executive education in sustainable food system and systems thinking in uh, Wagen Niner University, Netherlands, and is currently doing executive education on sustainable leadership in Stanford University on a scholarship. Pag pinagsama-sama mo to, isipin mo, we are talking about a 70-year-old woman. But look, a young, vibrant, and wonderful, and equally beautiful guest we have today. Good afternoon, Cherry! Hi, good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much, Michael, for that uh, wow, very uh, beautiful introduction. Uh, good afternoon, Eric. You look so good. By the way, Kara, Michael, Shara, I really need Hi. to shout out my mommy, Ivy. I think she's uh, in the participants right now. So good afternoon, everyone. I'm really so delighted, you know, uh, to be invited to to share in here. Actually, I was calling Michael yes last night at last around night. 9 p.m. I think I was like, "Wait, I need to do justice to your invitation." So can you receive a call from me? I know my 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 day was so busy yesterday, and we just launched the YouTube channel 
of Mami Ivy Almario and Cynthia Almario. So if you have time, you know, please watch it. So it was really nice. And uh, Michael, as you know, you mentioned, Michael is 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 not a stranger to me he's a friend i always call and brainstorm about life um but for all the listeners right now i really prepared my presentation and uh last night i was thinking of you know basically all of us can uh you know we are designers you know we design in different platforms uh you are here you're interior designers architects and me i'm a farmer i'm known to make farming sexy and glamorous because why not right <laughs> Uh, when a lot of people would always say that farming is is uh, is a one-way ticket to poverty and drudgery, you know, farming is for the poor, farming is for the old people. I think farmer is for the young, the cool, and the hip, and to people who really want to create impact and changes. And I will share my screen, if I may, so that I can start the conversation. And uh, I was uh, informed by Michael that uh, my presentation will will really you know run in 40 minutes so i sh i will share with you the journey of you know the farm producers as well as the consumers but at the same time how do we integrate intentional design and you know um, and transforming basically our food systems so i titled my talk into um you know designing a transformational and intentional food systems i think especially after this pandemic, every one of us, right? Uh, when you experience, it's, it's the first time that the food and agriculture conversation is becoming mainstream. It's the first time that everyone now is wanting to be a plantito, a plantita. It's the first time that I think on your desk, you want to have a little bit of cactus to just, you know, put greenery. But it's also the first time that there's really so much planning happening on how we can change you know our food systems to be better how we can change the, the source of food but more importantly in the work that I will be presenting to you is how do we really dignify and design the lives of the people in the food systems uh, especially the farmers and the fisher folks you know the people in the food supply chain but more importantly you us all of us who are eating because we're so connected to this one so everything started when I was 11 years old. Uh, I happened to read a book. It's called Biointensive Gardening. And the book says, if you're poor, 100% of your income goes to food. You know, 70% is rice, 30% is ulam. Uh, it's not a meal without rice in the Philippines. But at the end of the day, uh, the book says, since you don't have enough money anymore to bring your children to school or have a roof on your head, you better know how to plant your own food. You know, if you cannot plant rice, at least you can plant your ulam. You know, you can start with your favorite vegetables in your backyard. For an 11-year-old girl, I was so fascinated because it seems like a very simple formula to be sustainable. It's a very simple formula to reach food sovereignty and that's pure freedom as a human being. And it, it is a very simple formula for saving money because it says the more you plant, the more you print your money, right? So I was 11 and I, I went home and then I asked my mom to buy me a bike. And, you know, I started teaching farmers in Sarisari Sari stores in Negros Occidental in the Hacienda to basically, you know, those people who are working in the sugarcane field to see that every weekend you don't need to go to Sarisari Sari stores to burn what you earn the entire week in planting sugarcane or taking care of sugarcane or harvesting, but basically start planting your food so that you can save money your children will be in school and we can you know save you out from poverty but at the end of the day little did I know that that simple book has become my calling has become my journey and you know I was informed that it's not enough to be successful you should also be relevant and for all of you guys who are attending here hopefully uh, we need to bear this in mind, especially during this pandemic. It's such an awakening. How do we really contribute to changes around us, right? And right now, um, you know, there's a splash of big chance to create big change in front of you right now. If you're seeing my screen, uh, it's really palpable that there's a huge calling to create big changes. And this is our big chance to create it because our world is resetting and we had a big pause for almost two years now. So I want you also to take a pause and what kind of big change and what kind of big chance 
um, is being offered in front of you right now to be part of it. Um, if you see this screen, um, this is the map of the Philippines. You know, you see the beautiful Mount Banawe, the source of our bounty, you know, and you also see our beautiful water. So I'm showing this because Philippines is such an agricultural country. Um, along that white sand beach are also our beautiful sanctuary source of our blue economy. And in the upper portion, that's our beautiful Mount Banawe, which is our source of green economy. So both terrestrial and uh, water, you know, economies that we're actually sourcing our food. And our country is so powerful in terms of beauty, in terms of natural resources, in terms of, of course, you know, as we talk about nature in all the discussions that you had with your previous speaker. But what's unique in the Philippines is we are composed of 7,000 plus islands. And this is not ordinary. You know, Philippines is actually not a small country. It's a big one. But it's, it has also its own wealth and uniqueness in terms of source of food, in terms of a lot of sources of income, supposedly for people. But sad to say, it is also, you know, um, a, a most um, unsustainable country. It's because we are not really taking care of our country. We don't even proud, maybe, of our country. We don't even proud of our natural resources. We are not really giving enough intention on all the islands that we have. Uh, when I was 22 years old, I happened to travel 81 provinces of the Philippines because of my work as a consultant of the Department of Agriculture and Agrarian Reform. And I think it's just innate for me as a young person that I always have questions in my head. When I was going around the Philippines, I said, wow, I was in Sulu and Tawi Tawi. They said it's like full of war, but it's so beautiful. I was eating lobsters like, you know, so cheap and a farmer would, and a fisherman would just go to the sea and, you know, by lunch you have lobster, crabs, it's overflowing. And if you go to the mountain tops, you know, I've been to Batanes, uh, you see the most beautiful root crops that we have in Batanes. But then when you see, go to the mega cities, there's so much hunger so much malnutrition happening, so much imbalance in our ecosystem. So I think as you know, designers, you may be architect, interior designers, and me, I'm designing into the agriculture space. These are really something that we need to think, we need to ask ourselves, and we really need to, to ponder with so much intuition and intentionality. Uh, I'm very big in sustainable development goals. Uh, this is really where you know, I'm actually focusing all our work, especially in Agraya, uh, but more importantly, in my global work as a UN ambassador for nutrition. Um, this is something that I memorize on a daily basis. And I see in the participants, most of you are young people. Uh, in 2014, before the launch of SDGs, transitioning from MDG, the Millennium Development Goals, to the Sustainable Development Goals, I was actually part of uh, 15 young people all over the world who were invited by the United Nations to stay in the United Nations for two weeks to review the launch of sustainable development goals that young people are included. So if you see our sustainable development goals, our world is actually working on this now. It may be you're from the private sector, you're from NGO sector, you're from public sector, but more importantly, even the finance sector is asking us to follow the SDGs. So I'm sharing to you the SDGs. It's because, um, you know, it's, it's really about asking ourselves in our design, what is sustainability? Because we're always focusing on, if you want to design something, it needs to be sustainable in the long run. <clears throat> it's really building your own legacy as a designer. It's really changing something that is um, monumental, that even we're not here in the world, you know, a physically present, your essence is there. It's because it's sustainable. And for me, I'll just going to give you a bit of review. Sustainability means a development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs. It's really about how do we becoming more selfless now 
but then still attaining what we need to have, still living a wonderful life, but we are not stealing the future uh, of our next generation. And I so happened last night, I, the other night I hosted the launch of the book called Move, that now the current and the now is actually owned by the youth. And the future will be owned by the youth. You know, there will be a generation alpha. Right now we are millennials and Gen Z. In 2025, generation alpha will come out. So it means that the generation alpha, they really need to focus on sustainability because they are the ones designing what the next generation will be. And as per Jane Jacobs, uh, she says that the economy is a wholly owned subsidiary of the environment and not the other way around. So I'm, I'm sharing this every time I give a talk. It's because this is very important. You know, you may be a designer, but everything that we do contributes to the advancement of our economy. I'm in the agriculture and everything that I do contributes to the advancement of our economy. But economy is actually um, not sustainable if the environment is compromised. You know, you can see right now design that it needs to be, you know, well surrounded with nature. It needs to respect nature, right? Uh, I was just in Dubai for the Dubai Expo and I was so amazed how they really focus on economy, uh, foundation or mobility, uh, sustainability and actually profitability but at the same time environment is is the center of everything so i'm sharing to you now i'm journeying where are we right now in the philippines you know in 2020 a population count we are reaching 110 million people and look at this you know this is like the common uh farming family or a fishing family or an urban poor family if they're in urban setting. Um, we're really insatiably growing and all the more that we need to design stuff that we can handle the growth of our population. But at the same time, we live a decent life as individuals. So we are reaching 110 million people and our farmers are aging, they're poor, they have low educational attainment. In the Philippines, our farmer says that, you know, in 10 years from now, the farmers in the Philippines cannot afford to feed, you know, and to sustain our food need anymore. Because if that farmer is 70 years old, how can that farmer carry a sack of rice? You know, I think some of the attendees here, I saw people from Indoro, from all over the Philippines, basically. You just, you know, go and see outside your window and you see um, a rice land. And that's very important, right? But you also need to think that is a farmer of this rice farm old or how do we sustain this? So you have a population that is 110 million and a farmers that are aging, I call them endangered species. But in the Philippines also our average age is 23 years old. Imagine an aging farmers feeding a 23 year old average age population. The math doesn't coincide sustainability wise. It's such a big gap to be sustainable. And I want you to ponder about this. Uh, if you're in the audience right now, if you're a son of a farmer, a fisher folk, this is something very important. When the farmer is poor, so is the whole country. And that's from a Polish proverb. So we really need to go and think beyond how to really uplift the lives of our farmers. And for the past uh, few months, I think uh, uh, more than a year actually, I've been part of developing this five action tracks of the United Nations. Uh, since May in 2020, in the, you know, in the doom and gloom of the pandemic, the United Nations uh, called me to be part uh, of the global champions of food systems, designing and really, you know, um, acknowledging the fact that our current food system is making us sick, our parents seeker, but more importantly, our environment the sickest. We cannot think anymore that it's only about agriculture. You know, you eat, you produce. As long as there's food on my table, I'm enough. So this is the first time that the United Nations made food system as its own agenda. And even in COP26 right now, it's not anymore climate change. It's now food and climate. You know how it's changing. 
So for the past uh, couple of months, uh, we were gathered, 60 of us experts all over the world to design these five action tracks. If you see in there, it really tackles on access to safe and nutritious food for all, you know, safe to sustainable food consumption patterns, boost nature positive production, advance equitable livelihoods, and build resilience and vulnerability shocks and stresses. The number five is very near and dear to the Philippines because we have 20 to 21 typhoons in a year. No, nagsasanta cruzan yung typhoon natin. Hindi pa tapos yung isa nandyan na naman yung isa, di ba? So it's really scary. And here we are just relaxing in our household, but our food system is collapsing in front of us. And this is alarming. We need to make this as our personal issue because maybe you can eat now or in the next few years, but after three years, maybe there's no food that we can eat anymore. What if there's another lockdown and Vietnam, China, Myanmar, um, Thailand cannot sustain our food need anymore? So Filipinos, we are not resilient as we say we're resilient because our intestines are connected to our neighbor countries. Our rice are coming from other countries. You know, even our mongo are coming from China and Vietnam. I want you to realize that. I just don't want you to chill, relax, and just sit there. But I want you to buckle up because this is a journey and it's, it's alarming. And I want you that during my talk, I want you to realize that even you as designers, you know, architects and interior designers, I want you to be relevant this to you. Because at the end of the day, food is our umbilical cord to Mother Earth. The moment we neglect the fact that food is our umbilical cord to Mother Earth, we're neglecting ourselves. We are neglecting nature. We are neglecting our ecosystem. And you are a part of that ecosystem. You don't own a system as a human being. But if you see in all this, you know, action tracks and action areas that we developed, uh, you can see the focus now. We need to go back and even learn from indigenous people because for the longest time, they are the most resilient. Why? Because they're so connected to nature. You know, a gender, women are identified that if the world is actually 50% composed of women, we need to see the power of women. We need to make our food systems gender equal, equal. And lastly, the youth. The youth are the now, the current. They are not the future. They are the now and the current. They will just be identifying our future. So from all of that introduction, right, from where are we now, how many population we have, what the situation of our farmers. And I want you to know our organization. Um, Mami Ivy Almari is a co-founder of this one. Uh, I'm, if I'm the founding farmer, she is the founding designer. <laughs> so we call our company uh, Agraya. It's actually a fusion of two words, agriculture and Gaia, Mother Earth in Greek. Um, it's an inclusive an innovative for-purpose agribusiness that is founded on sustainable agriculture, fair trade, and replicable model of an agri-based economy. If you see, we focus on cultivation of human beings. When the world is measuring agriculture in terms of how much hectareage of land you cultivated, you know, how much yield of rice, of pumpkin, of kamatis you harvested, we don't measure much of that because those are technical steps. Why can't we measure how much we cultivated our human beings? How much we influence our food producers? How much do we give importance to the consumers? Because at the end of the day, we cannot poison them. So how do we really make sure that there's this ecology of dignity, there's this agri-based economy in the Philippines, knowing that Philippines is an agricultural country? And there's a fair trade happening that all these food producers are actually being paid well, but at the same time, our consumers, they have enough money. The, the power of their money is powerful because food will be affordable and accessible for them. This is my favorite quote. Uh, it's from Masanobu Fukua, uh, Fukuoka. Uh, he is a very famous Japanese farmer and a revolutionary You know, uh, in, in, in 1975. He said, the ultimate goal of farming is not the growing of crops, but the cultivation and perfection of human beings. I think, you know, when we design stuff, as we design agriculture solutions, right? If you put a phase in it, you know, I'm a scientist in my background, but science is nothing. You know, I can grow whatever in test tube. 
right? But then at the end of the day, it's all nothing if we cannot put a face in science, if we cannot put a face in design. You know, putting a face in science and design means you're actually putting, there's empathy, there's compassion as what the video was saying a while ago. So this is what we do in Agrea. And, you know, this is, what is ecology of dignity? You know, a lot of people are always asking me, Sherry, that's so profound. What is ecology of dignity? Basically, the ecology of dignity is, you know, design as an expression of intent. We design that we put all the ingredients that our values and principles in and our intent is good. And second one, it's transformational, not transactional. We do business with our farmers that it transforms their lives. Uh, we do business with our farmers that it's not like one transaction, but the moment that you know it transforms you. Like for example, uh, a few weeks ago, I called one of our farmers to congratulate him because. Um, he harvested 1.6 tons of ginger from his 1,000 square meters of land, and he has a hectare of land. And this farmer has been farming for 70 years. He's 78 years old. When he received my call, his name is Tatay Celso, he cried because it's his first time to receive 160,000 pesos payment, you know, from planting ginger in just 1,000 square meter of land. I told him, Tata, you have one hectare, that's 10,000 uh, square meter of land. If you plant ginger in your 1,000 hectare, you can earn 1.6 million. He couldn't believe it. He cried and he cried because he couldn't believe it. So these are the things that we actually want to do with our farmers. You know, when I go to our farming communities, they would always tell me, Ma, may bubong na po yung bahay ko. Kasi kinita namin last time from turmeric, binili po namin ng bubong. Ma, may kortina na po yung bahay ko kasi hindi na siya tumutulo. Ma'am Che, meron na po kaming kusina na maayos para po tag-ulan, hindi na uh, lalabas yung asawa ko para magluto. Miss Che, next time, pag matulog ka po sa bahay namin, hindi ka na po lalabas sa gabi para ihi. Kasi po, ma'am, may CR na po kami sa loob. Those are the kind of things that we really want to see. You know, it's changing lives. And third one, it's about inclusive social well-being. Why social well-being? This is actually a sum of individual well-being. You know, right now, our company is working with 30,000 smallholder farmers in the Philippines, and it's not a joke. It's a big responsibility, especially during this pandemic, that you cannot move. You cannot even meet some of them because of so much restrictions. But we're always saying ourselves that we need to work on inclusive social well-being. We need to really sum up the individual well-being so that we can create a mass. And another one, if you see, you know, it boils down to human being. It boils down to, to people. It boils down to us as visionaries of this company. It boils down mm -hmm. to our consumers who are believing in us. And in that way, we can build an intergenerational well-being. This is what the quote was saying a while ago. How can we avail and be satisfied of what we have now without stealing the future generation of what they can experience and what they can lavish more. So for us, this is really about ecology of dignity, the nature of nurture and the nature of dignifying and respecting the ecology around our food producers, around our consumers and around our, our economy, but more importantly, our environment. So this is uh, the vision mission of Agria. I'll not you know, dig deeper in this one. But our vision really is to create the first one island economy model in the Philippines. Uh, right now we're in the island of Marinduque. We have so many islands in the Philippines. Hopefully in our lifetime, you know, we can see this really progressing. And we're really focusing on zero waste, zero hunger and zero insufficiency. Of course, there are 17 sustainable development goals. Out of those 17 sustainable development goals, we're focusing on 13. And if we focus on zero hunger here, for example, this is not about the hunger of stomach. This is not physical hunger. You know, we believe in the potential of the human spirit through a thinking heart. Imagine a thinking heart. This is about a hunger of a human being to belong, a hunger of human being to be dignified, a hunger of a human being to be respected. And we really want to be a business that is known that, oh, if it's agri, yeah, it's an agribusiness with a heart. It's really about doing good and doing well at the same time. 
it's not just about being bigger, but being better at the same time. So for us, you know, as we are designing, maybe this is the design essence of our company. You know, it's really written well in our vision and mission. And uh, even in our website, it's very intentional that our website is actually running in zero uh, waste. Uh, if you open our website in the middle of the sea with 2G, you know, you don't even have 3G, it works. We partner with Joomla Tools. It's a Belgian company founded in Silicon Valley that they design our website that it, it, it's running in sustainable energy. Because right now our web is actually obese. You know, our web is obese. That's why a lot of satellites are being sent out in the open because our web is obese. There's so much satellites now up in the air that they are competing with our stars to sustain the obesity of our web. So for us, everything is intentional. It may be in the digital platform. It may be in all the work that we do. So this is what I was saying to you a while ago. We are now present in the island of Marinduque and also in Shergao Islands. Um, you know, in Shergao, we have vegetable production. We have a uh, rice meal that we're starting in there. Uh, we, we're also starting our pig. Uh, this morning, I received a picture that our, one of our black pigs gave birth to 14 little piglets. That's my happiness, by the way. So that's why I'm sharing it with you. Because, you know, pag nanganak yung baboy mo, talagang big time, 14, imagine. Um, so it, 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 those are little things, you know, that they really make me happy. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's powerful because it shows life. You know, when there's life, there's always hope and there's always new beginning. So these are the things that we're doing. And uh, we're actually overwhelmed for invitations to expand our work in different islands. But we said that we just, you know, give us time to pause and plan it out because pandemic is really making all of us immobile, right? So for all the intentions that I was doing, all the soft skills that I was sharing to you a while ago about transformational and not transactional, about designing with intent, but what is agria in the hardware? You know, we are known in regenerative farming and agriculture in the Philippines. I think we're the first. Uh, this is the future of agriculture. If you see in Netflix, the uh, Kiss the Ground, uh, I sit in the board of an organization that actually funded the uh, Kiss the Ground. Uh, it's, it's really powerful. And that's why I'm a big proponent of regenerative agriculture. And that's what we're doing in, in the island of Marinduque or in Shergao or wherever we have our intervention. We're known in nutrient-dense agriculture. So we are really encouraging our farmers not only to plant you know, um, monocrop, but really to diversify. We're known in climate-resilient farming approach. For example, in this picture, forgive myself, I'm there. I was just so happy. Um, it's a picture of a coconut farm, you know? How many coconut farms do you see around you most of the time that below the coconuts, they're empty? Unless you will plant cacao, coffee, you know, or lanzones, for example, but most of the time they're empty. And if you talk to a coconut farmer, they're only earning $60 every 45 days, means 3,000 pesos to 5,000 pesos jackpot when they harvest for copra. Imagine 45 days, that's one month and a half to harvest copra, meaning that's how poor our coconut farmers are. So in our company, we said, okay, you can still harvest your coconut for copra or we make it into coconut sugar, but below it, we utilize it for high value. If typhoon will come, you lost five coconut trees, but you still have ginger and turmeric. You know, in the picture, the leaves below the coconut underneath are actually turmeric. So it means the farmers, they're still earning from their turmeric and around it, they plant papaya, they plant vegetables for their consumption. You know, we provide them pigs. Uh, we also provide them uh, chicken. Uh, in our company, we have this program. When a farmer signed up, for example, in Marinduque, they receive a care package. It's called Biodiversity and Nutritional Care Package. You know, it's a composition of different kinds of vegetable seeds. Uh, a training program from Agria Farm School. And also if they graduate from Agria Farm School and if they want to take care of chicken or pigs, during their graduation, we give them a female pig or we give them three chickens to start. You know, that's your gift in your graduation, right? Together with your certificate from the farm school. And fourth, we're so known in circular economy. 
I think a lot of you stumbled upon circular economy, right? We can do another discussion on circular economy. But in our farm, you are not allowed to burn any leaves. You know, everything is plow back and turn as a fertilizer and it goes back to your soil. So when it goes back to your soil, it means in next cropping season, you can save 10 to 15%. Instead of buying fertilizer, you don't need to buy fertilizer anymore because the waste of the last cropping season becomes the fertilizer of your soil. And a lot more, you know, of circular economy um, interventions that we're doing in our farms. So for example, uh, this one, I show you, uh, okay, you know, this is our farmers. So, you know, this farm before, the farmers there, uh, they don't have water for 30 years. And one time there was an El Nino in 2018 and we said, let's make a project. Let's give them water in 30 days. And we did. We used solar, a water pump because there's no electricity in there. And the source of the water is from the river down uh, below, which is, which is 128 feet um, you know, deep. And we really made it happen in 30 days and the farmers were so happy and right now you know they're planting uh, bananas and some other um, vegetables around the area and aside from giving farmers solar water pump this is really a project that we really want to propel more and more uh, we are actually opening another solar water pump in in Bicol in Albay because we're starting our farm school also in Albay uh, but we also give a starter kit to our farm, farming graduates in a farm school. So, you know, we have programs that if you graduate in our farm school and you want to start farming, you receive these gifts from us so that there's no excuse for you. Because most of the time you attend a training to collect certificate, right? In Agraya, you cannot collect certificate. You need to farm because you will receive this, you know? So you cannot just put it on the side or display in your house. You really need to start farming. And we monitor you. So in our farm school, you know, we do a lot of teaching and a lot of technologies in there. And the most beautiful in our farm school, this is an A-star school in the Philippines. Um, the most beautiful in our farm school is actually designing curriculum for people who don't even know how to read and write. When we work in Marinduque, a lot of farmers, they don't know different technologies it's because they don't know how to read and write. They're afraid to go to school. And because they're afraid to go to school, their children are mostly not in school because they're afraid to fill out enrollment forms for their children to be in school. So our society is set that it's so intimidating for people to survive or even to thrive, right? So if you go to our farm school, we design curriculums that even if you don't know how to read and write, you learn and you still know how to farm. So like for example in here, on your first day in our farm school, as much as you're excited to plant pet chai, as much as you're excited to take care and feed and make you know, technologies uh, for your chicken and pigs, you're not allowed. For three days, you're just allowed to sit and to dream. Because I guess the problem that we have right now, especially for example, in rural or urban or even in the poorest communities, if a person is so busy, isang kahig, isang toka, for example, if a person is so busy to think what's for the next meal, you will not have time to think what's your dream in life, right? That's, that's, that's the real cause, you know? It's a shift of mindset. So in our farm school for three days, you're not allowed to plant as much as you're so excited to learn technologies in farming, you're not allowed. For three days, you're allowed to be grateful. You're, you're being taught how to, to care. You're, you're being taught how to even map out your plans in life. And you're even taught how, how's your contribution to nation building? Because I think we didn't see our farmers or fisher folks that they have big, bigger contribution to nation building. So we teach them what's your farm, uh, what's your dream for yourself? What's your dream for your family, for your community, for your province and to the country in general? So that every time he wakes up, diba, parang kanino ka bumabangon? Ito yung hinahawakan ko. Dito ako bumabangon. Now it's certain. I have dream for myself, for my family. Dito ako bumabangon. It's more than, it's, it's, it's not like bumabangon ako kasi wala kaming pagkain sa tanghali. Wala kaming pagkain, magugutong kami. No, bumabangon ako kasi may pangarap ako. Second one, we even have this uh, um, uh, education program to our farm school that our farmers, 
they're asked to close their eyes for 10 minutes and we have series of questions. For example, uh, una yan, sabihin mo sa akin kung mahirap ka. Of course, no, sagot nila, ay mahirap po kasi kami eh, wala kaming pagkain, hindi nakapag-aral yung anak ko, things like that. So close your eyes. Uh, you know, just imagine you're in your house. Anong nakikita mo sa paligid? You know, pagkagising nila after 10 minutes, pagbukas ng mata nila, ano pong nakita nyo? Ma, mayroon po akong isang ektaryang lupa na naman na sa agrarian reform. Uh, mayroon po kaming ano, um, coconut, no? May niyugan po kami. Mayroon kaming denting manok. Mayroon kaming dalawang baboy na katali sa aming bakuran. Uh, mayroon po kaming mga gulay sa paligid. May bahay po kami. Medyo natutulo lang yung bahay namin. Uh, yung anak ko po at saka yung asawa ko po, uh, healthy naman. Ang next na sagot, so ngayon, dahil meron kang isang hektaryang lupa or ilang lupa man, meron kang coconut, meron kang manok, meron kang baboy, meron kang uh, gulay, sabihin mo sa akin, mahirap ka or hindi? Ang sagot, ay hindi po pala ako mahirap, ma'am. Walang mahirap na may isang hektaryang lupa. Walang mahirap na may manok at baboy. Walang mahirap na may gulayan. You know, so from there, you shift the design of so now, since hindi ka pala mahirap, how can we design that you can be an agripreneur? It's because now you're a farmer. How can you be a farmer agripreneur? You know, and then that's where they are designing. Alam ko na ma'am kung magkano yung kikitain ko sa isang buwan. Alam ko na ma'am kung paano ko mapaaral yung aking mga anak. So, you know, the picture here, it's our first graduate in our farm school. And look at this. Even in designing our curriculum, you know, you cannot, uh, you cannot um, explain right or understand what you cannot measure. And you cannot make decisions if you cannot measure things from your previous interventions. So in our farm school, uh, if you see the girl power, we're so big in, in female and youth uh, because they are really the backbone of the work in changing the food systems. From 3% in 2017, we reach now to 63% because we were so intentional. We go to Barangay, talk to the SK to work with young persons who are, kung hindi namin sila masave, they will be contributing to early teenage pregnancy. You know, so why not engage them in our program? And uh, another one is, uh, you know, we even have age group. If you see here on the right side, uh, zero to 35 years old youth group, it's 55% you know, of our intervention. So every year we review how many women are we reaching? How many youth are we reaching before it was too little? So every year we redesign and design and improve our project. So because I was mentioning to you that our work is so big and female and, and, and youth, uh, we're actually focusing on designing programs that are for 21st uh, century food producers. So one, uh, look at this. You know, these are yards of public schools in Marinduque and in Shergao. Most of these yards are just empty, right? But uh, what we do is we do another program, uh, the garden classroom, where the teachers and the parents teachers association are required to gather as much waste, recyclable waste around the barangay to make it into a garden in their school. So look at this, diba? the you know, Coke bottles and tires, they form it into a garden in their school and it's so beautiful. A lot of kids, they want to be going in their school more and more because their yard is so beautiful. It's so colorful and they contributed you know, to, to, to our environment. I'll show you a video about Ako po si Ma'am Joan Villara mula po sa Bayak Bakin Elementary School at para po sa kaalaman ako po ay labing isang taon na po dito na nagtuturo sa aming paaralan bilang school head po at the same time ay ako po ay classroom teacher handling multi-grade classes and ako rin po ay nagtuturo po ng ATT class at na sa tunayan po ay naituro ko po ng maayos yung o po mga kaalaman tungkol po sa pagtatunin so balit noong po mga una-una na ako po ay nagtuturo dito sa aming paaralan, eh medyo nagkaroon po kami ng mga problema. Ako lang sa mga materyales at sa mga, sa mga technical assistance na kung minsan po ay nagkakaroon po ng uh, shortage. Pero sa pagtaka ko po sa pagtuturo, ay nagkaroon po ako ng pagkakataon na dumalo po sa mga pagsasanay. At ako po ay nagpapasalamat sapagkat nakilala ko po ang Agria 
simula po noon, napasok po nila ang aming eskwelahan at ang aming komunidad. Uh, nabigyan po ako ng pagkakataon na magkaroon ng training po sa Agria na libre. At um, ako po ay natutuwa sapagkat ako po ay naragdagan ng kaalaman. Dati-dati po, hindi po namin alam ang marami pang bagay tungkol po sa pagtatanim. Pero sa kabila po ng lahat ng aking pag aattend ng training sa kanila, sa company po ng Agria, ako po ay natutuwa at ito po ay naibahagi ko po sa aking mga mag-aaral, gayon din po sa aking mga kasamahang guro. At gayon din po, para mas tumawag pa, ito po ay masaya ko pong ibinahagi sa aming komunidad. Nakakatuwa po sapagkat ang suporta po ng komunidad ng aming Sangguni ang Barangay Council, gayon din po ang PTA po namin, sobrang suporta po sa aming eskwelahan. Sa pamamagitan po ng aking delikadong pagawa sa aming eskwelahan ay nahikayat po po sila na yakapin ang pagtatanim. Nakakatuwa po sapagkat sa kanila po po hinuhugot yung aking punlaka sa aking tong paglilingkod bilang isang guro at yun po ay maipalaganap po po yung programa po ng pagtatanim bilang isa pong ang pamamaraan para po mapaunlad yung kanilang pamumuhay dito sa maliit na komunidad. Ako po ay patuloy ang panawagan sa aming pong mga mamamayan dito sa aming maliit pong barangay na ipagpatuloy po yung pagmamahal po sa pagtatanim sapagkat sa pagtatanim po, makukuha po natin doon yung tamang sustansya ng ipinapakain po natin sa ating mga anak gayon din po yung mga kakainin pa ng mga susunod na henerasyon. Muli po, ako po si Joanne Pilar, teacher in charge po ng Bayakbakin Elementary School. Buong puso pong nagpapasalamat sa Agria, gayon din po sa Sustainability Summit. Ako po. So imagine, you know, we start really from the bottom. And this community right now, we have 75 farmers uh, who graduated actually our program. And another one, uh, we're also big in a lot of young people. Uh, we accept internship program. These young people actually are genetic engineers. We found out that the farmers, they don't have land title. Uh, they don't have land title because they don't have money to hire a genetic engineer, which is very expensive. So we partner with a university where I come from, Visaya State University from Leyte. They flew the students of genetic engineers to our farm in Marinduque to map out 60 hectares of land of our farmers. And you know what? After that, all our farmers, they got their land title. Imagine because of the help of these university students. And we also work with a lot of uh, youth in war zone areas. You know, we launched Marawi Seeds instead of Marawi Siege in Marawi, where these young people, if you see the pictures, you know, they're wearing the Agria t-shirt in black. All of this uh, youth here are actually children of Sultan, Dato, Abosayaf, Imayalef. You, you, you name it. You know, we brought them in our farm and the police came because they said they know these children. But these young people, they're saying to us during our, our event that if our parents were killing each other, we want to end the war. We want to be the solution to end the war. And imagine when they go back to their farming communities and the picture on their side, these are their mothers. They train their mothers to convert the war zone come into a food production come. So I think I have another video for that one. So ito, isa sa mga program ito ng uh, US Embassy na kumpulong sila ng mga from war stripping uh, areas para may mga bata na sa agriculture. So, Thank you. 
ito, you will feel your echo it. Okay, kasi hindi natin kayang tulungan ng buong Lanao del Sur, but we know we have the best people here right now. So, you're our best seed that we're going to send out back to Lanao del Sur so that you can do more with your community. Okay. Yes. So that's actually one of our programs for the youth in what's this in 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 Mindanao, you know, these are from Zamba Sulta. Zambonga Basilan, Sulu, Tawi Tawi, and Lano del Sur. Imagine these areas where you know the war is always happening. And if you see and listen to these youth, they are dreamers, they want to end the war. And imagine those future sultans, Datus. And their families are doing redo. They said, Mom, we will just farm para wala na pong gulo sa Mindanao because Mindanao is the food basket of the Philippines. And another intervention, uh, it's really about uh, gender equality. On the global level, Agria is actually a co-founder of a movement called Grow Her. We are now uh, launching this in Asia Pacific. We just first launched in the Philippines last March. Uh, last month, we launched in Indonesia. And next month, we are actually launching in China and India. So Agria is working in the Philippines, but also expanding globally. This is a microsite where we design stuff and all the events that we do for women should inspire women, inform women, and include women. And in the Philippines, um, we have a program called Forward, and we just launched this manifesto. <laughs> Dati, naghihintay lang ako. Ngayon, nasa kamay ko na ang pagbuhay sa aking pamilya. Isa pang salita ang nadagdag sa aking pagkatao. Babae, kapatid, at magsasaka. Babae, anak, at magsasaka. Babae, asawa, at magsasaka. Babae, ina, at magsasaka. Tulad ng aking mga pananim na lumalago, lumalago din ako sa aking sikap, sa aking dunong, at sa aking pangalan. Ivy Almario. <laughs> so she's, she's actually in the participant right now. But anyway, because of that, uh, we have actually a national movement called Plant, 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 you know, with the Department of Agriculture, with the women in both rural and urban areas. Uh, we also have a lot of programs we design for more love for women farmers. Uh, we did it in Shergao. And imagine, you know, a lot of our women actually are really the, now taking ownership on making their land productive, on making their family healthier. But at the end of the day, it's really, you know, building our economy. And um, we also have programs for women. Uh, for example, in Marinduque, by next year, we're putting our processing facility so that a lot of these women will be included in, in, in saving food waste and, uh, you know, ugly vegetables and fruits. We will be converting them into value addition products. And this is something that we have been working on a policy level. Uh, we're working on Magna Carta of rural women. So we have uh, some congressmen and senators supporting us to make this happen. If you see in the picture, we got on my, you know, beside me and at the center, on my left side, it's the first woman IP, indigenous uh, community leader in the Philippines. 
you know um and then a lot of them are actually the heads of the bangsamoro region so last on my slides actually um we're ending at the end of my slide uh i'm timing myself <laughs> response during the pandemic uh i want you to think about this i think all of us right now are really um you know victims of this pandemic right but i don't want us to be victims we want us to be thriving survivors that we are thriving but at the same time you are not leaving uh no one behind you know but this is a sad number 4.2 million families right now in the philippines are hungry you know they're suffering involuntary hunger uh when we were doing a lot of programs in metro manila you could see that you know a lot of them are are writing this but they nasa gutom this is covid 19 the threat of hunger is as real as the threat of COVID-19. I happened to be in uh, Payatas last year, and we, you know, we, we, we did a lot of feeding program for 1,000 um, uh, families in Payatas. And one of the little boys there, he's around 10 years old, he asked me, um, ano po yung dala nyo? Sabi ko, pagkain. Ay, ma'am, salamat po talaga ate, salamat po. Bakit po? Kasi yung isang tang na sachet, yun lang yung tinutunaw nila sa tubig, yun na yung pagkain nila the whole day. The entire family. And this little boy has like four more siblings. So it's really something that is real and felt. Uh, tomorrow, I will go to Payatas again because we are converting a 1,000 square meter dump site into an urban farm, you know, with 80 women in there. So, but what we did during the pandemic, I thought I'll just watch Crash Landing on You or read some books that I was like, you know, wanting to read when the lockdown was announced. But a call from one pineapple farmer ignited the movement out of empathy and compassion. I think na kamasil ako because this pineapple farmer asked me to help sell 15,000 pineapples and I don't even know him. He just called our Agria Facebook and really asking for help. So lo and behold, we sold his 15,000 pineapples. And that movement, I'll show you just by May, we started March. And this one was captured by the World Economic Forum because the World Economic Forum said, Cherry, we need to capture your work because this is something that other countries in the world need to follow. Oh. Oh. And um, because of that, actually, um, it's not moving. The, the UN also wanted to capture our work because they saw the World Economic Forum. And then they said, you know, we are the United Nations. We need to also capture this so that it can be shared to other countries. And this video was translated to five uh, uh, UN languages.
one time an apple farmer called our CEO to ask for help in moving his pineapples to the market because he was having problems of selling these pineapples because there was no market anymore. There was a call for help and we stepped up and helped. We just hit the ground running. We had to start from the bottom, which is farmers' capacity building, so that we could bring about a more impactful change and help prevent overproduction, hence also prevent food wastage, which has become a big problem during this pandemic. The call of that one pineapple farmer became a movement of 30,000 more farmers through Liquid Nation. So imagine a simple intervention that we did reached the world and it's really reaching a lot of, you know, of corners in the Philippines. But what inspires me a lot, it's because of that. We help, you know, more than 28,000 farmers or 30,000 farmers by the end of the year. But we also rescue food. So we launched the Agria Rescue Kitchen. It actually won two major awards from Burberry Grant, you know, and another award from a social gastronomy movement in Switzerland. And it's really an example that a Filipino can, you know, Filipinos can. And Filipinos can inspire the world, right? It's not always the Western solution that will help us solve our problem. We are the solutions of our experience and felt problems. So despite all of those, you know, uh, at night I was cooking jam. Mommy Ivy was the one designing the packaging. She was drawing, she was wrapping. The following day, I posted it in my social media. We sold all our jams and pickles, right? So this is my last slide. Most things except agriculture can wait. So right now, if you have food on your table every day, please thank a farmer and a fisher folk or people in the supply chain because it's not easy to bring food on your table. Uh, it's not easy to actually farm. Uh, I met um, you know, a chef recently. It was very insightful. He was telling me a chef is always given enough recognition. A lot of young people are loving the chef, recognizing the chef. But a chef will only slice a carrot in five seconds. A farmer will plant the carrot in five months. So hopefully starting today with all the things that I was sharing with you from the software and the hardware of where Agria is and where we're, are we leading and what's the intention and the design intent that we do in transforming our food systems, hopefully inspired you. We can collaborate in the future and hopefully it will make you think, it will make you move to take collective action. Thank you so much. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow Cherry. Grabe. Alam mo, for a moment, Cherry, for a moment, Wow, Cherry. it's a Michael. Hey, yeah, for a moment, I got, you, you know me, Eric, I easily get emotional with things. For a moment, <laughs> I was really teary-eyed. I mean, um, I cannot contain the impact that uh, this this wonderful woman, this wonderful lady, is you know, is creating all over the world. You know, a ripple of goodness, great waves of kindness around the world. Galeng, I'm amazing. I you're yes, my friend. Exactly. But but I'm not saying this to you because you're my friend. Um, Sabi ko nga, when, when we support someone, we're not only supporting what she does, but we're also supporting the causes that person stand for. So, yeah. Ah, grabe. Hinga lang muna. Hinga. Grabe. Oh, Michael. <laughs> and I know grabe yung ano eh, diba? The impact that she's creating through yeah. carefully designed initiatives and interventions. Now, the challenge for us is how do we replicate this kind of impact in our own spaces, diba? And so, I, we're excited to hear the comments of our panelists as well and questions from our students. You can type that in the chat box. But I'd like to start a conversation, Michael, if you'd allow me. Um, 
by asking Cherry this question. You know, Cherry, um, grabe, I'm so floored by the kind of impact you've created in so many communities, not just in the Philippines, I suppose, but all over and inspiring other communities to follow. I guess my question is, what do you think is the common pitfall in the way we design communities, spaces, and maybe the, the way we live life in general? And what is the kind of mindset that we need to shift to if we want to make it really for, for everyone and put a face to, to all of these things? The common pitfall actually is going there in the community and in your head, you have this thinking that you are the Messiah, that you can solve their problem. In Agria, yeah, in, in all our employees, you know, especially our, our agriculturists, uh, they're required to stay in a farmer's house, wake up when the farmer is waking up, eat what they eat, sleep when it's time to sleep. It's because in understanding the core of the problem, you become a facilitator. When you become a facilitator, ego is not present. Because you facilitate to make things happen. But if you go to a certain community with a mindset na magaling ako, eh, nag-aral kasi ako eh. But you know what? It humbles you because the farmers, they are their solutions. You talk about sustainability. I talk about sustainability on the global level. When I go to Tatay Carlos, he knows sustainability better than me in a more practical way. Kasi sabi niya wala siyang pera, but he lives for 78 years. You know, so it's really a sense of humility that all of us mm-hmm. professionals, when we go to a certain community, the deep sense of you need to be a blank canvas going right. there. Right. You're there to understand, you're there to facilitate, and you're there to really you know, encourage them to be the solution mm-hmm. to their problem. For us, the way we can design something that's they are the core of the design. They are part of the design. It means they have ownership of the design. Wow, beautiful. Grabe! Kinikilig ako at kinikilabutan. <laughs> yes, so, so architect Nina is so excited that she's raising her hand. So we'll go now to first to architect Nina. Architect Nina. Architect Nina. Oh, it's... Oh, yeah, uh, architect Nina. Can you hear me? It's just a wow, really. A wow. Thank you are so inspiring. Um, it's, it shows the kind of person you have developed into over the years who is far and beyond the job. Wow, at such a young age, no? Because uh, I'm, I'm and I'm, we're really following the path and we're finding what my calling is. Aside from being an architect, doing sustainable buildings, well, ano pa yung maitutulong ko? Parang ganon. I'm still looking for that. But you, at such a young age, you are following the call already. That blend of passion and purpose, it swings mostly deeply to the deepest core of us. You moved me. Oh, no? thank you. We, we must realize that uh, real happiness Depends on making some genuine contribution to life, on doing something that makes life better, not only for ourselves, but for others as well. And you are doing that at such a young age. <laughs> Thank you for you I and I. You. We must come to understand also that life is not a destination. It is a process of bringing to completeness all the gifts that we have been given. It is discovering our gifts, and you are discovering your gifts and how to <laughs> know how to give them away. You are uh, you are agents of change. Oh, thank you, yeah. Aristotle. Hey, Aristotle, pa, nung araw pa, virtuous activity yan. Yeah. Virtuous oh, activity. Oh. Nung thank araw pa, tagal na nun. Pero ngayon, you're agents of change. Thank you. Oh, thank you uh, very architect. much, architect. Akala architect. ko may question ka. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to talk about how we help the students later. Kanina, Cherry, nung in-introduce kita, kung napansin mo, hindi ako nag-mention ng years, di ba? Kasi I don't want to give away your age. Uh, for for the information of all, sinatawag po niyang mami si, uh, si IDR Ivy Almario. But actually, um, si Cherry po ay 90 years old na. <laughs> 
Yeah, 90 years old na. Yeah. Wow. Ay, um, um, galing, galing. Oh, so, yeah. Um, I, I, I love that the conversation is really picking up right now. Maybe we wanna, we wanna call, uh, sabi ni Wilmer kanina, meron daw siyang, ano, isi-share. So, maybe, Wilmer, we wanna invite you for a conversation with Cherry. <laughs> I, yeah, um, Cherry, kasi for the past, uh, during this pandemic, I'm attending several uh, seminars. And recently, I attended this, how do you call that, uh, the farming that is sustainable. Um, I forgot the the term, but it's really an effort and really passion talaga para, you know, to involve yourself in gardening. Kasi even when I was a kid, uh, provinciano ako, and I'm from Nueva Ecija, and maraming, marami dong mga bukid, and I'm really, ano, I'm really exposed to nature. So, really, it's, the problem now because um, many lands now are being converted. Uh, converted into something else. And when I see them, na, na ano ko, na nalulungkot ako because, you know, uh, the farmers have worked a lot for that and been transferred to something else na medyo limited yung nagbe-benefit and I do think important na because we have food in our plate is because of the farmers and sinabi mo mabuti yun na we really have to honor them bigyan natin sila ng uh, malaking uh, chance to be part of the society because without them wala tayong pagkain di ba? especially now um, yun um, yun naman kayo na uh, Mike pala, may gusto kasi akong share. This is another personal story that I want to share with everyone. Kasi uh, this is Aida and um, last 2019, something happened to us in our family. Nasunog yung bahay namin sa probinsya, our ancestral house. So it's, it's very painful for us because siyempre it's our house, doon ako lumaki. And when you see your house is naging wala na, uh, parang it's really something that you don't know how, what to do. And ako, as a designer, uh, napaisip ako parang, um, of course, in a personal level, the family, may question ka, paano yung history ng, ng bahay namin, saan kami lumaki. Pangalawa is, as a designer, what will be our, my 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 solution on this challenge kasi nga it's the house is burned so after a long ano process and pandemic you know mapapaisip ka and na uh, isip namin na why don't we go back to our roots uh, yung nanay ko kasi mahilig maghalaman maggarden and ako rin nahawa sa kanya and we have a land there na enough for many things to to plant so just Mid year this this year lang we thought of something to do about the house and um, hindi naman kasi siya completely nasunog um, so what we thought is making it into a greenhouse instead you know um, kasi isipin mo when you pag nasunogan ka ng bahay what you will do is gigibain mo na siya kasi you know you don't, you want to forget that, that what happened and build a new one but for us, ang nag resonate is like this. Para when you when you want to keep the memory, but you want to move on, you have to think of something else. So we decided that okay, let's build a greenhouse this time. And I think it's our common denominator for everyone that we love plants, we love trees. And so right now we are turning it nga into a greenhouse. Merong natira mga parts like there's one bedroom for my mother and then a kitchen. But the rest, wala na. So, if you will enter inside, uh, it's a different approach when you design it kasi when you design space, it's you're inside the house. But this one, ang ititira mo is plants. So, you have to consider many things like paano ang sunlight nila, paano ang araw, uh, you know, everything. So, 
another thing is may mga natira kasi yung mga furniture pieces. And for the young designers here, uh, what we did kasi is we restore some furniture pieces like tables, one chair, you know, and then maybe restore it, repaint it, um, turn it to something more meaningful for us. So I think for this one, we were able to find a solution to a challenge that someone might be hard to face this kind of problem. But you have to be tough, you have to be yun nga, matapang ka because looking at it, parang wala nang pwede mangyari. The language will work. The language of, um, I, I love it when you converted the impact of trauma in both yeah. personal and your historical background. And, and you allowed nature to be part of transforming and healing the, 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 the entire you know, trauma in, impact on you and your family and the environment. So, Galeng, ako, what I'm picking up here, um, Cherry, is that uh, nature by itself not, is not only sustaining, it is also healing, no? So, um, thank you, Wilmer, for that wonderful story. Galeng, yeah, galeng. Yeah. We'll, we'll go back to that later on. Uh, I want to invite Kara for uh, a conversation with uh, with us here with Cherry. Kara? Yes. Hello. Hi. So uh, I think I'm very <laughs> familiar with farming because I'm married to a farmer. So <laughs> wow. my, dad, my dad is a farmer. So uh, I'm, I really love, I love your whole uh, talk. It was so inspiring, especially since it's very close to my heart. And you know when I when I met my husband in a blind date, and when when we first met, he's I asked him, "Oh, what do you do?" You know, and he said, "Oh, I raise ducks." So I was like, me being you know kind of slow, I said, my first thought was racing, like car racing, like horse racing, racing ducks. <laughs> so I said, "How do ducks run?" I was like, "What?" And he's like, "No." I, 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 we, we make balot, you know? So I was like, oh, I see. Okay, I, I get it. So I, that's our story. Everybody laughs at it because he thinks, you know, I, I was like, wow, I'm so slow. But, you know, I, it's, it has been our business ever since we've moved to um, chickens and fishes and uh, we have uh, layers of eggs. We have goats. So it's really how we are surviving, even in this pandemic, because it's really the most basic, you know, food is the most basic, eggs are the most basic, you really need it to survive. And um, even in, in our home, I think, um, since we are farmers by nature, you know, our, our garden, I post this also, we have converted parts of our garden to plant our own um, things at home. We, we have our own um, vegetables. And then recently we made a, a mushroom farm also in one of another part of our home. So we're eating a lot of produce that we make at home, you know, and it's really, it really gives you a sense of pride and you love eating it. And you're so proud. Like you post it on in, in the internet. Look, I grew this lettuce, you know, but really if, if we can feel that way, how about the farmers who really went there and went to the ground and planted these seeds and harvested them? It must be so um, special, even that one turmeric or gar you know, ginger piece they have is really special to them. So um, I think farming is really the heart of the Philippines. We have to continue to do it and not just in the province, but even in our own backyards, I think we have to keep developing it because um, uh, it's the future. We have to be sustainable. And our homes also have to develop or adapt to this new way of thinking that you can grow your own food, that you don't have to go far to get really fresh produce. So uh, I'm so I'm really amazed at the work that you do because it's not just for the Philippines, but for the whole, you know, the whole world is listening to you and reacting to your call to for a sustainable and uh, sustainable life and to make farming again sexy you know i know farmers are sexy my husband is sexy you know <laughs> agree to that yeah thank you wonderful um alam mo, si, si, si Cara, one of our connect connecting points is food so kaling um i this for me um ang lakas ng impact kanina cherry when you were 
talking about um, food sustainability, ang, ang lakas ng impact kanina nung sinabi mong if, if we adore chefs who, who serves and creates wonderful food and, and he takes about five minutes to slice and peel a carrot, and maybe for us a minute to gobble and the, and, and 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 you know uh, chew on it it takes 5 months no it takes 5 months to grow this piece of vegetable um th- th- that creates so much impact uh, on how i think after i heard that um ito yung sinulat ko eh so um from from siguro a perspective of um our cla- our, our panelists here you know our panelists here and and also cherry who's also a designer in a different platform or arena. Um, ito, yung, ito yung magandang itanong as a reflection and maybe how we, we can move forward with this conversation. Are we designing... No, sorry, sorry. Maybe ibahin natin yung tanong. Are we consuming right? Are we designing right? And maybe to close it, are we treating Mother Nature right on how our mindset of design is coming along. Who wants to start? Wilmer. Yeah, Wilmer. Maybe let's uh, no, highlight all the panelists all together so we just have a, a nice conversation here. Wilmer. Yeah. Because uh, this is about sustainability nga and about yun nga, care for the environment. And Ako, I'm practicing design for more than 20 years. And I think, <clears throat> I think, uh, napapaisip ako, kasi sabi ko, uh, when we design something, uh, we get all the materials, and siyempre galito sa mga natural resources natin, like wood. And when we do that, ang ano natin is, intention is pagandahin ng isang space. And then, after that, what will happen ba? Parang when you, when you turn over to our client and then after a while, saan na pupunta yung mga kinrate nating spaces? Because I'm just thinking, saan ba na ano to sa mga wasteland ba? Or, you know, kinoconvert ba into something? Uh, for me, I think we need to very, to really think well on how we can, uh, how, maganda yung practice kasi natin na pagandahin ng isang design. But what's the next thing happen sa future natin? Because um, medyo now it's pandemic, napaisip ka. Napaisip ka. Um, just like what happened nga in our house, in that instead na gibain mo yung isang structure and dalhin mo sa wasteland yung mga ano, mga materials doon, you create something uh, per- may purpose siya instead of buying new things to to build a new one. Repurposing okay. another? Yeah, repurposing. That, that's that's a, a, a nice solution to to be put on the table. Galeng, galeng, galeng. Yeah. Um, architect, Anna, uh, architect Nina? Um, What's your... <laughs> na, uh, alam mo... Um... Low that to see came to my mind hanggang habang nagsasalita si ang ating speaker no kasi uh, it is a call ni Pope a letter from Pope Francis on the care of our common home no ethics do not pertain only to the way we ought to treat the individuals we also have duties of justice to the earth itself Mm-hmm. Throughout the encyclical, Pope Francis emphasizes interconnectedness of all things. It also says that the environment implies a relationship between nature and society. It is not a stand alone. And it is always the poor who bear the greatest burden in the degradation of nature. So thus, the Pope proposes the paradigm of integral ecology, which is a holistic perspective on reality which seeks not only to promote human flourishing but also the flourishing of the natural world. Yun Ganda. ang mga ginagawa nila. Yan ang mga pinakita ni yeah. na speaker kanina. And we are as uh, since the world is at uh, the moment 
in a profound crisis brought on by the challenge of climate change, we are called to action. Uh, hindi lang yung action ng mga policymakers, but we must get to the roots, no? And he is calling us for new processes of education that would foster changes in the fundamental knowledge that we have about good character, in the healing of the world, of the wounds of the earth. So, ang ganda, itong nangyayari ta, sa atin dito sa AIDA, this is another form of education, di ba? That nagsasama-sama tayo to, to, let, to share knowledge, to be informed, and to, let, and to inform others. Napakaganda. And thank you, Chair. Cherry for that. <laughs> Nakakaano nakaka talaga, nakaka-inspire. Nakaka-move, nakakagising, nakakagising no. Oh. Nakakagising ng damdamin. Okay. Kara, you um would would you like to share a perspective on what I've said? Are we consuming right, no? Are we designing right and and, and in the bigger picture, are we treating mother nature right before I pass it on to Cherry? Yeah, you know um I, I noticed this uh, maybe the past four years already. It really bothers me, you know. Whenever we buy items for delivery, like anything that's delivered for the houses that we design, like the sofas, especially the big items, they're wrapped in so much wasteful plastic. Really, every piece, a sofa or maybe a chair will be wrapped six million times <laughs> with, with plastic which is such a waste. And imagine all of the houses that we're designing and all of the items that are put there. So I think even in this small detail, not just beautifying the home, but even how it is transported, how it is wrapped, the big items. It's easy to do it for, you know, for food, malaliit, small things. But for the bigger pieces that we use, it's, um, we use a lot of wasteful things that, um, that harm mother nature. So number one that's one thing that I was that really it really hurts me when I see it and there's as much as possible I can I if I can talk to the supplier I would say please can you just deliver it carefully but you don't have to wrap it in so much of this excess things it's important to keep it simplify things mm -hmm. right? and secondly I think we I think again for repurposing I cannot throw a single piece of furniture away even the ugliest bench outside that has been there, I always think of how I can redesign it and reuse it for something else. We, and, and really, um, our, our, our Filipino culture, we're, we're, we're kind of, we reuse a lot, like all of our, our magnolia ice cream Everywhere, stuff yeah. we use to put our food, <laughs> right? So we can do the same thing for our home, all of the things that we have um, even way back we can reuse them and, and even use them as decorative items. You know, at home, I have a lot of Filipino things that are used in the farm. I display a lot of them, you know, yung mga pandikdik or yung mga plow. I use it, I hang it on the wall. It, I, I, in, in my design philosophies, I like also showcasing uh, the stuff that we have here. We have to also showcase how we um, do things in the Philippines. And I think, for me, that's one thing that we can contribute. We have to really share our knowledge in that in that way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ivy, since you're here in our conversation, would you like to share a perspective on um on are we are we could yeah. Yeah. Walking, yeah, that's the Ivy walking. I mean you're lagging. Oh, a ako naman, Cherry, meron akong ano, uh, while, while Ivy is um, getting a, a better connection, ako, ito yung ano, ito yung gusto kong pag-usapan natin ng konti, so, Cherry. Excuse the man. Ayan. <laughs> My God. <laughs> yeah, okay. She's in the job site. Yeah, oo. Hi. <laughs> My mommy, you're in the job site. Hi, sweetheart. Can you hear me na? I yes. am better. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sorry, I just uh, arrived at the job site. I wasn't expecting to be called. Uh, no make up, uh, nothing. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry. No, yeah. how beautiful, how beautiful and how timely that the other judges who are here 
are personally involved in agriculture themselves. So they know and understand the process. Having lived with a farmer for the last seven years, I see her day in, day out. In fact, we gave her a, a mural of an empty rice bowl at the back of her, of her head, uh, bed to remind her every day to grow food to feed our people. Yeah. If you say, um, to answer your question, Michael, I think um, the number one, I, I think, akala ko dati kasi when I researched, and I might be wrong, I akala ko ang pinaka major pollutant at saka yung, yung nagko-contribute sa, sa ozone depletion was the car industry. Yung pala construction industry, tayo pala ang number one. Come to think of it, bakit hindi? You know, when you think of all the construction going on in the world. So now that we're being very mindful in small ways, I was touched by what Tara said about, you know, when furniture is delivered, it's, it's really wrapped in, you know what, miles and miles of saran wrap, which is plastic, right? Um, so in small things, um, especially, and I'll keep this short, and also especially, of course, for us as designers, vintage has become um, special. So, so repurposing has become chic again. So if we must keep it and save it because it works, because it also... Um, Place making the memories. You cannot replace the memories associated with an object. And if we honor that, we're also honoring Mother Earth at the same time. So wonderful. that's all. I'll just keep it short. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Ako, uh, Cherry, I wanna know. I wanna. I wanna pick up with some pick up on something you said of value, Kanina, and it. Alam mo yung hindi to korote, batok ito, hoy gising, ito sabi niya sa akin. You mentioned about the ecology of dignity. It, it is so powerful that you even mentioned um, when the farmer is poor, the country is poor. No? Um, how, how, how will this be an inspiration? How will this be an insight? How will this be a perspective that 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 can be, you know, an agent of transformation and an inspiration of design altogether. Could that happen, Cherry? You know, it takes a lot of, for me, it takes a lot of great intent coming from all of us to really change what's happening right now. Because, you know, maybe some of us are not yet in the level that uh, you know, you can really change the world and things like that, but we're not bringing you even there. For me, my ask is, it will happen if each of us here will take responsibility and accountability that I have a trash, I'll keep my trash. I have to recycle. I need to make sense out of this. I need to use my talent to rescue this broken furniture and make it into something, you know, and build memories about it. I, I need to make sure that every time I eat, um, you know, it's somehow sourced local and supporting our, our farmers and local economy. Or like Kara, you know, she's planting vegetables. Me also in a rooftop, uh, I'm planting vegetables. I have two big bananas now. One time, I have bananas here in my back. Uh, I'm in my bedroom. It's full of plants, if you see. I'm thriving with my plants. And one time I said, I'll bring my bananas when they're like fruiting so that I wake up and just harvest my food. <laughs> you know, it's, it comes from all great intention. And for all the people who are attending here, especially the young ones, you have so much to contribute. And you have so much insights. Like for example, just this afternoon, I think, you know, uh, when I, I would share, Michael, when I was 15 years old, I really want to be an agribusiness person. And I grew up in Bacolod. In Bacolod, you cannot attend conference. There's no free Zoom. There's no free, there was no free conference at the time. And I was 15 years old and I really said, if I want to dedicate my life on changing the lives of the farmers or build my own business out of it, or making this, you know, passion as a calling and finding my purpose, because to be passionate is not enough. Finding purpose in that passion and converting it as a calling, hopefully it's something that will awaken all of us. And you know, when I was 15, so hindi libre yung conference. Every morning before the conference, I would go to a parking lot 
where all of these hacienderos and sabongeros and the rich people attending the conference in Bacolod because every quarter there's a big conference in Bacolod you know, where we export sugar, we're the number one in pineapple, banana, mango, sugar in the Philippines to export it globally. Uh, I would wait for a person in the parking lot na matanda Sabihin ko, uh, Tito, pwede po bang you introduce me to the registration center na I'm your apo. And then I will carry your lunch back and your medicine kit because they're not allowing me for sure to enter because I don't have a company. I cannot afford to pay the conference fee. Uh, just get me in there. So this old man, you know, they would bring me to a conference and introduce me to the registration center na, you know, uh, uh, she's my apo. She needs to remind me to take my medicine, when to take my lunch and everything. When I enter the conference, grabe. For me, it's it's really taking that ownership and accountability to learn. So when I'm there in a the conference, I write everything. I listen to them attentively, you know, listening to the global trade of sugarcane, global trade of bananas, global trade at 15. And then when they ask me, iha, kuha na mo naman ako ng kape, kuha na mo ako ng tubig. So I run naman and then I'm, I'm back and then writing notes and writing notes. So it built me in two areas. And I want the people here, if you want to think about sustainability, if this is now your calling, you may be in food, you'll be in interior designer, you'll be an architect, common scenario. If you really want to take this as your traction in life, always make sure that you understand, you have a clarity of intent you have a clarity of purpose because having that clarity, your actions will just collide with that. Actions is a product of clarity of intentions. Right? And second one, uh, on tangible areas, if you're in your home, for example, uh, please really try to make sure that we don't destroy our nature. Uh, if you're in your household, more importantly, and a big proponent of nutrition, eat healthy because as much as you know the world is demanding us to be our best to 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 serve to to really focus on sustainability to changing something at the end of the day the biggest responsibility is taking care of yourself i always tell people about that because if you don't take care of yourself um sustainability because it demands leadership and all the more you're there people will demand leadership from you so for me, it's really about sustainable leadership from within yourself. And then your actions will collide to that. And in that way, I guess, if there's one person or 10 people from this conference will take an action to follow my little advice based on my experience, definitely we can change the world. It may not happen in our lifetime, but at least we contributed to planting that little seed, you know, for, for, for the world, right? So, yan lang. May babasahin lang ako, Mike. Um, this is actually coming from Albert Einstein. You know, this is something that I remind myself. Hopefully, everyone will listen. A human being is part of a whole called by is the universe, a part limited in time and space. He experiences himself, his thoughts, and feelings as something separated from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of his consciousness. This delusion is a kind of prison for us, restricting us to our personal desires and to affection for a few persons nearest us. Our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circles of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. That's Albert Einstein who even reached relativity. But at the end of the day, going back to our humanity, going back to our nature and going back to experiencing the beauty of nature. So I'll end with that. And hopefully that seed of little advice will inspire our young people, you know, to really take action, take action. Thank you. Galing, galing, Cherry. Yeah. And, and, and your parting words are really amazing. And dahil dyan, Cherry, hihingin ko na eh, forward mo yan sa akin at nang mapag-isipan at mapag-reflect. It's in my journal. Yan na naman oh, yung just share, journal. Share it to me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, sure. Um, forward sa atin. Yes, I will. Definitely forward to the entire AYDA team. 
Yes. Um, we're running already <clears throat> towards our last part of our time. Um, maybe at this point, I'd like to ask our panelists your 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 last messages, no? Your last messages, your your words of inspiration, your guiding light for our entries. Uh, unahin ko na si Wilmer, siya yung nag-iisang <laughs> thorn among the roses. <laughs> Wilmer! All right. Um, well, it says about everything kasi and nature is very close to close to our heart. Uh, we know that plants, trees, and all these things are give shelter to us. And kailangan bigyan din natin sila ng respeto. Because if we will not respect them, you know, one, one way or the other, baka magsisi tayo. So as a designer and to the young designers who are here, I encourage everyone to be responsible on when you design something, yung unang line nyo pa lang ng pencil nyo, saan ba papunta tong guhit na to? If it will lead you to something better and make the life of an individual uh, improve, uh, that's something. Hindi kailangan na it's at the entire uh, entire community, but you can start from small. And that that what's matter. Yun nga sabi ni Cherry. And with that, good luck to everyone. <laughs> thank, thank, you, you. thank you. Thank you, Wilmer. Well said. Kara? Um, what can I say? I think for for the entries, you know, it's more, I think interior design is not just about beautification of a space, you know. Everything has to have a function and everything has to have a purpose. So when you, when you design with a purpose, then it will really flow. If you're not just designing to impress, but to dis design, design using your heart and to have a purpose for the user and for the people who are um, going to be part of that space, who are going to use that space with you. So, you know, it's as simple things as um, windows where the light will flow, where the wind will come in, you know, how to reduce the energy that the house will be consuming, uh, maybe more areas for nature, uh, using less plastic, uh, using materials that are available here to lessen the carbon footprint of importing everything and to support our local craftsmen. So actually all of these things will come together and that is what is sustainable for yourself, for our industry and for the people using it. You have to think bigger. It's not just beauty, it's purpose. That's what wow. I have to say. Thank you. Galing. Well said from a beautiful woman herself. Yeah, I'm I'm saving the last for architect Nina. Architect Thank Nina. You. <clears throat> Thank you, Mike. Uh, for the entries, uh, the question, the big question is, how can you make your projects thrive so that during times of crisis, it can be resilient? Mm -hmm. No? So we should think that uh, our primary purpose natin <clears throat> is to lower the carbon footprint, no? Unang-una, coming from nature is the materials that we use. The sustainability. Uh, concrete contributes much to the global warming. So use of local materials. We use passive cooling. Uh, more energy efficiency. Yung reusing of the old accents sa mga old buildings coming from, I know. And then you can put it in your modern design, it would be very beautiful. Nung <clears throat> Typhoon Yolanda, ang naiwan lang na structure sa Tacloban is the Banco Central. Kasi pinaano nila yung ibabaw, bukod sa deck, pina, pinapatungan pa ng roofing, no? And yung makapal na, 20, gauge 24. But when we inspected, para siyang ano, Yung bacon, ganun kalakas ang ano natin, yung, yung calamities coming from nature. So we should put humans at the center of your design. So it's not just protecting the humans from the calamities of nature, but at the same time, your design should also protect nature. Because nature knows no boundaries. Uh, yeah. Good you luck! Know, <laughs> you know, um, kaya ko hinuli yung mga mothers. No? Because we all <laughs> think of 
um, n- as when we think nature, ang susunod palagi mother nature, yeah. di ba? Because yeah. I, ako, I believe that, that the power the power of the human being, more specifically the women, is both compassionate and healing. Mm-hmm. Ba? So, galing. Um, ako, I'm, I'm so overwhelmed today, but before I go on with, with what, what, what I pick up from today, I want to personally thank Cherry. Cherry, um, you just cannot imagine. Akala ko, I know what you do and I know you by by the end of your hair. Hi. Hindi pa pala. Grabe. 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 Grabe, Cherry. Marami tayong pag-uusapan. And then I'm so honored to have you here this afternoon. And ako ito lang, meron akong bragging rights. Di ba sabi nila, tell me who your friends are and we will tell you who you are. So, kayo nang magsabi kung anong klaseng tao ko. Kaibigan ko si Wilmer, kaibigan ko si Kara, kaibigan ko si Architect Nina. So, we nice are a family city of designers here, di ba? So, yes. thank, you, thank you. Thank you, Cherry. My heart goes also to Wilmer. Thank you for saying yes to this. Thank you. Of course. Other for a long, long time, and I'm so happy to join you with you here in AYDA. Thank you, Kara. Thank you, Kara. Thank you, Architect Thank Nina. You Thank so you so much. much. Thank you also. Thank you so Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's a wonderful so, um, exchange. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. So, Kanina, when I was listening to to the the entire talk of um the entire talk of Cherry, it made me realize so many things. And dami, and dami kong sinulat dito. Um. The power of transformation really comes from the intention, no? And for me, that's a lingering thought in my mind. And and then sinabi pa niya, sabi niya, the dignity and the lives of people behind the system. We always look at what we we consume, what we handle, what what's in front of us. But but we never thought of the people who actually spend time removing the dirt, pulling it from the ground, or even putting it in 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 the packaging as we see it. After that, it made me realize that whatever we, we savor on on our table brings us back to, to the dirt under the fingers of the farmer. And for me, that's very humbling at the same time. I, I, I felt we need, we need to widen our perspective. That maybe after this talk, we don't only confine the definition of space within the four walls of, of the houses we do. Maybe after this talk, we, we understand that when we, when we mean space, we're not only designing the soft and the hard surfaces. We are also designing how nature will come out after we wave the wand of wonder in our interiors. I, I love everything what, um, what Cherry said. Another echoing and rippling memory in, 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 in her talk today is how big the chance and how big the change. Galing, galing, galing. And alam mo, here, Cherry, I, I, I want to personally take pride and at the same time honor you because on the get-go of this AYDA, if um, when we were talking about sustainability, I never thought in my wildest dream that there is a Filipina behind the putting together, the polishing, and the finalizing of this UN State, United Nations Sustainable Developmental Goals. And um, Ibang Classic, Cherry. Your presence, your wisdom, your light from your heart truly illuminated this afternoon. And, and with this, um, I'm pretty sure the future is really looking bright. And the future is not, it's not dark as, as, as we may think it is. Um, beyond the pandemic, I realize our bodies may be confined in, in the four walls of our houses. But our dreams are flying out. They're out of the window and being realized right now. And you are a testament of that, Cherry. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, and with this talk, we end the four series of Design Talk. And again, I want to say um, thank you to Nippon Paints for making this happen. And thank you to our generous speakers, um, uh, empathy. I had a good, very good friend also. Our friend of uh, Cherry too, si Pen Roque. We had um, under technology, Jimbo Reverente. Under uh, culture, we had two speakers, Prof or Kajun de Leon and Cherise. No? Now today we had Cherry. All, this reco- all these talks are recorded and will be available in 
um, our our YouTube channel. Later on, we'll post it. Um, ito lang yung ano, ito lang yung gusto kong sabihin. Um, truly, this AYDA, it is more than just a design competition. It is a community of support and love that that goes beyond making beautiful designs. It's making sure that the future will be in good hands. Thank you, everyone. Um, I believe Eric is here. Eric? Medyo nag ano yata. Nag, Wala nag, pa po yata, Sir Mike. Wala pa po yata yeah, si Eric. Oh. <laughs> you know, oh. ayan. Okay. So, we actually asked um, um, Nippon Paint in line with this nature theme to prepare a video um, that may be uh, of importance, no? Um, uh, Mr. MQ, did, are we playing the video before we close? Okay. Let me check, Sir Alex. Wait a minute. So, Michael... Hmm. Before yeah. that, I just want to share to everyone the beauty of nature. So, saying hi from... MQ from, can highlight Eric also. Just saying thank you everyone, Mabuhay, and sharing with you God's beautiful nature. Wow, wow. You, you have fun and you take care. We'll see you soon, Eric. Bye. Thank you. So, MQ, do we have a video to show? Let me check, sir, if it's already... Let me okay. Anyway, we, we, if off. it's not... Meron, meron. Um, I have my technical error, sir. So, you could take it up, sir. Let me try to pick it. So, I'll pass it on to you, MQ. Thank you, everyone. Okay, Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so with that, uh, again, we'd like to thank everyone uh, who attended the uh, four sessions of our design talk. So as what Ma Sir Mike said, uh, all, all of these talks will be uploaded on our YouTube account. So again, I flashed them on screen. Ito po yung mga social media accounts po natin that uh, you could like or follow so that you'll be updated with all the announcements, all the updates that we have for AYDA. Okay. So again, just a reminder, our deadline is on December 3, so everything is digital. So you just have to go to our website, uh, youngdesignerwar.ph, para po makapag-submit. Uh, you will find there the online submission portal that we have. And for anything, for any, any questions you may have, you may contact me directly. So these are my details. Uh, you may call, text, or email me through here. And then, as we always say, thank you. Maraming maraming salat po sa inyo. And uh, we do hope that... Uh, uh, all of these programs that we have, the mentoring series, these design talks, and the online caravan have contributed and have encouraged all of you to participate and join the competition. So we hope to see all of your entries come December 3. So maraming maraming salamat and stay safe po sa inyo lahat. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.